Hi there, folks. Simon here. Welcome to the 2023 July Beginner Tech Tournament Semifinals. This is the semifinals between Alexaris and Cap88. Interesting thing about these two competitors, unlike our other two semifinalists, uh, the other two semifinalists are both from the USA. Uh, these are both from Germany. So interesting, we've got Germany versus USA in the finals no matter what happens. Uh, and both of these players have some interesting history. Alexaris has played in a previous beginner tournament and did very well. I had him pegged as the winner of that tournament. Uh, however, he didn't make it through the group stage, just barely missed out on the group stage, but did, did extremely well. Uh, and he, in this tournament, has gone undefeated. He has won every single game. So uh, he has definitely shown that he is a competitor to, uh, to watch out for. And Cap88, as we already see, they've already started because they're just too quick. Uh, Cap88 is um, also from Germany and a fairly new player, however, is doing a lot of self-examination and self-analysis and using the, uh, the bots in the Discord server to uh, check on his game and, and how he can improve. Uh, and we are also joined in the commentary booth by Tones and Evotion, the another fellow competitor in this semifinals. So, uh, yeah, they did not wait for me, as they should, punks. But uh, here we are, and we see a very unorthodox opening from really both players, although it seems Cap88 is going more towards a, a traditional sort of center control with that uh, opening capstone coming in there as well. <laughs> there you go. I do find it really odd that uh, that Black placed that B5 flat at first. Anyway, uh, we do see White just continuing to go for this uh, vertical threat. Um, I'm not sure how well that's going to work from here. Black probably wants to drop it like B4 um, and, and really just focus in on making a, a horizontal happen. does not instead goes for sort of a vertical line white drops the capstone now white might be switching to a horizontal <laughs> get to introduce you uh how how are you feeling after that like you just finished your two uh tournament games yeah. right yeah, and it's all good. It's uh, it was a very fast start to this game, uh, similar to to my first game that we we played earlier today. Um, uh, Not a wolf really just jumped straight into that one too, and uh, kind of took me by surprise at the start of that game too. Um, but yeah, it, it was good. Uh, I am still embarrassed by the ending of that second game, uh, but you know, it it's it's over and done with. Uh, only thing to focus on now is is uh, trying to. I guess, you know, quote unquote, prep as best I can for the Blitz games that'll be coming after that. Oh man, the uh, I, I will say that until just a second ago, right before Evotion started speaking, I had you guys both muted on the stream. So, <laughs> I, no. you know, no. <laughs> I am, I, I did well for the other one though. I had uh, the other games we did, I, I remembered, but this time I, I kind of messed it up. Uh, but yeah, it looks like from here, D1 is just a, a really quick threat for Black. Uh, not going to play the D1, though, surprisingly. I'm not sure why you wouldn't go for the D1 here to kind of force that uh, that capture response. But, um, but White's going to be making attack threat here on the next turn, so Black should probably make one here at D1. Doesn't. Captures down. I think White just wants to fill here at D4, right? I, I don't feel like there's any other option here. Better play. No, I think that's definitely the most obvious move. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, while we were muted, I was just voicing my approval for Cap 88's choice of a very strange opening. Mm hmm. Yep. Weird openings. You know, I approve of weird openings if you know them well and your opponent does not. 
because just the novelty factor and it being sort of out of someone's comfort zone automatically makes it good. But um, if, uh, if you're not familiar with it and they're not familiar with it, then it's not good. <laughs> you have to at least know what you're doing. I'd say even so, if you do know what I'll you're doing, if the uh, if the opponent is at just a too much of a higher skill level than you are, they can pretty easily counter it, and, and you're still left kind of floundering. Yes, yeah. I in the um, in the TAC Open in 2021, I played the Simmons Gambit, which hadn't been played before. Um, it was a, it was a Black's response to a Knight's opening and. People didn't know how to deal with it because they hadn't seen it before. It's very easily overcome. It's not a particularly good play as black, um, but it hadn't been done. So people didn't have prep for it until farther along in the tournament, in which case, uh, uh, you know, it was, it was easier at that time to play that and, and to do well with it. But once, once people saw it, it was dismantled fairly quickly. Um, here Legendary. we see white... Just pushing that horizontal, pushing, pushing, pushing. And I think that if black allows them to, they will continue to push. Like, uh, black playing a flat here at e5 seems like a good idea because it makes the threat. But um, I don't think that that's a particularly good play here. I mean, I, I think it could be good. Because what, what's really strange to me here is that they're both making threats, but then they both blocked each other's threats by making a flat on flat capture, even though they had the option to like use the capstone, which is, you know, what my first instinct would be. Because like, yeah, you can stop the threat, but every time you stop it with a flat on flat capture, you're kind of, you know, digging yourself in a deeper hole for later. Yeah, if white does d5 minus here, that capstone's coming up 100%. And capstone should also come up here. Like I don't think you can let him get away with with that. You you want to take that uh, that capstone up. Yeah, certainly. And he does it. And this is where I'd say absolutely black has a really strong advantage in this game right now. Even before that short sequence of moves right there, his his cap position was. I mean, just being on the inner, the inner center squares uh, is automatically better than than whites being on the outer uh, ring there. But the fact that it was on the inner, right next to white's capstone, kind of blocking white from moving in with his cap at all, I think that also uh, is something that a lot of beginners, myself included, uh, seem to forget a lot of the time. Is something that should try to be avoided as much as possible if you are somehow on the outer ring of, of squares. Yeah, we did see that in your uh, in your game, some some capstone blockage there. Mm hmm. All right, now Black's got a few options here. They can play for um, like an, an immediate threat, or they can build up their position, which I think is a much smarter thing to do at this point. And they do seem to be building up the position, playing up at e e six right now. Now, e6 works for a number of ways, going for the, the vertical still, but also going for the horizontal. White, really sticking to that horizontal, wants to be able to play at a5 on the following turn and, and make that tag threat. Um, I am not sure about how this is all going to play out here for white, but I can't imagine it's going to end too well, considering black has so many options to cut off white's threat and just really dismantle it completely. Um... I think that ultimately black comes out on top here, but white does have some opportunity. Yeah, you know, there's a couple of ways that black could try to make make this threat happen, but as you said, they really don't have to necessarily because you know they've got this really strong capstone in the center, ready to like shut down whatever white's gonna do. Kind of like I think it happened in game one with devotion. He had like that really strong capstone in the middle that just like whatever white tried to do uh it's gonna block anything so he doesn't doesn't have to try to force through a threat but it, yeah. it's not totally over because white definitely does have you know a couple ways that they could 
get like a real game plan going. Mm -hmm. If I'm black yeah, here, I just want to build up a position for some other threats like horizontally, because I know that I can dismantle whatever white's going to build. So I can play at B5. I can play at C6 or B6, B6 and C6. I don't have to make this capture here uh, that black made. Um, Cause I, I just, uh, that doesn't feel super strong to me. Despite it being attack threat, now whites come over with that capstone hard cap, blocks black's vertical. Now black has to fall back on the horizontal anyway, which is what they were gonna have to do regardless. Um, and it just, it, it feels like now black has fallen behind because of that move. And so now white can play for the horizontal and be further ahead in momentum. It's really interesting seeing other beginner games uh, from the perspective of of being on the, on the commentating side. Oftentimes when I'm watching your stream, Simon, um, I'm, I'm watching and I, I can't really think of how best uh, I would play the moves. But now that I'm, I'm here on this side, I'm trying to actively think about what sh what would I do in this position? What would I do in in you know if the opponent did this instead? And I'm seeing a lot of moves that both players are making. That I'm like, yeah, that that is something that I would think to do, and I think that might be the best move in this particular case. And then I'm seeing a lot of others that uh, it's making me question things. Oh yeah, the commentary booth definitely gives you the uh, the omnipotent perspective of uh, <laughs> you know. You don't have to be in the in the game, so you can have like a bit more yes. uh, detachment to like. Yeah. It, it really, I'm I'm saying this a bit uh, as a joke, but it really feels like you see things better when you're commentating. Of course, that's what a commentator would say, isn't it? But I think that makes a lot of sense. It's always easier to 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 see someone else's mistakes than it is to see your own, especially in the moment. All right, I see Black making the vertical threat now, but. That opens up white for making their horizontal threat and making it in, in a better way. And yeah, overall, I'd say that trade is won by white, despite black being able to make the threat again by cutting off whites. I think that white ultimately comes out ahead in terms of flats up here, able to make a plus three move on the following move after blocking this this threat, of course. But ultimately, I'd say uh -huh. white... white definitely comes out yeah. on top in this one. I don't know. That, that seemed really strong for white. But also, it seemed like Black had a very strong position there if only they had just played E5 instead of moving the capstone down. Because White would yeah. have had to... Or, well, or was there a threat? It was a threat. threat. It was a threat. Oh, never mind. Classic. Missing the tack threat. Okay. Good job, <laughs> But no, Mark. in this Good one, job, I feel like dropping the... Uh, I think moving the capstone over, the White cap onto E4, I think that was the mistake here. Black needed to instead drop uh, a wall up at E5 first. Instead of bringing the cap, right? Because they wanted to bring that cap up. Bring the cap up would have Definitely. ultimately been a whole lot stronger and um, and done a lot more damage and been a lot better for their positioning and for their flat count. Um, but they would have had to drop a wall first. And I think that it would have been worth it. They would have recovered this D5 stack underneath their capstone, or not under their capstone, but underneath the, their own flat, guarded by a capstone. Uh, overall, I think that it would have turned out significantly better for them if they had dropped the wall at E5 first. And you've got Black's capstone with, how many, is that four or five? That's four white flats underneath it. So it's got a lot of material under there that it's going to have to deal with at some point. Um, yeah, the game can turn around like pretty quick. You know, like a minute ago we were saying that, oh, it's really Black in control of this game. And now we're kind of saying White's got this, uh, after that exchange is probably slightly better off. But really, it just means that when we say someone's ahead, it doesn't mean they're super far ahead. It just means they've got ahead. a slight advantage. Yeah, almost never in in really anything other than the highest level games from what I've seen is there ever a clear, distinct winner up until someone wins. Yeah, it's it's tough um, when you, when you've got like a close flat game and. And, and you can tell sometimes within like four or five moves that there's no way someone's getting out of this sort of thing. That one, you can you can be like, okay, yeah, they, they're up by like six flats and there's no way they can make that up at this point. Um, but for the most part, yeah, it's, it's not over till it's over. 
and especially because someone can miss an easy threat. Um, black brings the cap over. This is not a threat. And he is building up quite a a bank of hostages he has there that, as you were saying earlier, he he's going to have to deal with. And once you get kind of locked in by yourself there, it's 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 hard to effectively utilize your capstone at all. Yeah, and yeah, this is risky. the carry limit. And yeah, there he goes. So he has to leave behind a white on D4 if he wants to move that capstone now. I'm thinking just wall on D3 now. Absolutely. Yeah, wall on D3 just yep. shuts that whole thing down. Yep. There and there it go. is. Now, the problem for white is his capstone is also kind of blocked behind on, on that right side of the board. But... Uh, Black's capstone is almost effectively useless at this point as well, so it's kind of a, a trade-off of... Black is ahead a fair bit on flats. I think, you know, once we get into a position like this, where we're like, okay, both players are doing roughly even, They're neither of them is super close to a road right now, that's when you got to start thinking about counting flats, and Black is ahead on that respect. I think here this is where white... Instead of building over at F4, I guess I, I understand you want to pin Black's capstone, but White should have been building at B3, I think, going for that uh, vertical now. Because they've got to shift gears. They can't make the horizontal work. They've got to go for the vertical here. Definitely. Yeah, maybe there's a bit of tunnel vision going on because they've been so focused on like White on that horizontal, Black on that vertical, so they're just continuing to build there. Well, they've got it now. It's possible that he was also looking to protect that right hand side from black mm -hmm. trying to build around white's capstone that's a good point oh that's a good point too yeah i mean even that one extra flat over there kind of uh, more effectively blocks off black from trying to to capture his way to victory on that side yeah that's true and caps uh the the white or black cap is now officially pinned so it can't move um it can't move up without immediate uh road loss and I think it can't even move left unless it goes all the way to B4 without immediate road loss. And even then, if black, if white plays his stones correctly, almost any movement from black leaving behind stones would effectively end up in a victory for white. Mm -hmm. White really pushing for that vertical. And black saw... The writing on the wall knows they need to go for that horizontal on the bottom on the the one and two rows but um i'm not sure if they're going to be able to make that work yeah they seem pretty even on these two threats that they're both trying to build uh, of course white has gotten their first and is now making attack threat black's going to make the next one with a c3 minus most likely because it cuts off the threat and uh makes their own I think it's so even that it might come down to the fact that white will at some point be able to get their capstone into the game whereas black is of course uh, their capstone is Some very weekend. interesting counters for black up at the top the top row there yeah actually there might be a threat up there now pretty soon I yeah, yeah I really don't like the c1 play here from Alexis I feel like that put him behind he needed to play up at a a6 i think i could even see at some point if black gets like if black gets a6 in and black gets f6 in there could be some kind of uh dragon win mm, yeah dragon claws maybe i'm too hopeful <laughs> i mean it's, it's hard not to see. root for a dragon claws <laughs> black makes the threat White's got to defend against this. Will they do B3 right? They will. Yeah. Not a threat at this yeah. point. But now we get the wall, which was Ooh. the inevitable play here to, to make the positive flag on differential. That's White nice just plays, wall. makes the threat, just goes for it. Does not also care. Also, a, a solid move, I think. If he can force that wall to move, uh, that just frees up the space for a flat placement right there. Oh, there's the road. Dang. He missed the drawbridge threat. 
he, he had to have made a, a C2 left was the, the defense there, but totally missed that that was going to be a road. So well played Cap88 for winning game one of the semifinals match against Alexis in the 2023 July Beginner Tech Tournament. So that is all for today, folks. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the description below for all things TAC, especially the TAC Discord server, which is the community hub and where you can find all sorts of TAC resources like strategy guides and people to play with, whether that be right here on playtac.com or asynchronously through the Discord server itself. Lots and lots of resources and people to play with and all sorts of great stuff there in the Discord. So be sure to check that out. And until next time, have a great day and happy tacking.